K98 Talk is expanding its lineup for 2015. This means we are expanding our advertising base. Whether you're a startup trying to push through to the next level or an established business trying to supplement your advertising budget, web-based advertising is a solid investment. Thanks to Talk's newest partnership with TuneIn Radio and instant access to our sister station, K98FM, we give you worldwide access at a reasonable cost. Interested parties should email us at sales at k98fm.com. K98talk.com, a leader in Internet radio. So grab your seatbelts and take the ride of your life on K98talk.com. We will keep this promise to the American people. If you like your doctor, you will be able to keep your doctor, period. If you like your health care plan, you will be able to keep your health care plan, Period. This is the most transparent administration in history. Not even a smidgen of corruption. Fact is, we had four dead Americans. What difference at this point does it make? If you've got a business, you didn't build that. Oh, welcome to the face. Welcome to the face of the new democracy. Don't expect just to get a mistake. We're paying off election debts to those who will take. It's time to hear the truth about America's biggest challenges. You're listening to America Off the Rails with your host, Rick Robinson. Well, happy Saturday morning, folks. It is Saturday, January 24th, 2015. It is uh, uh, getting close to about half past 11. Sorry, we did get a later start than usual. Um, actually, trying to do three shows back to back is a little more problematic than I thought with the setup that we're using. So, um, we are going to have to unfortunately institute a new policy called Rick Time. Um, for those of you who have ever worked for Southwest Airlines, you know you know about Herb Time. Some of you who frequent Southwest Airlines also know about Herb Time. Well, I'm now officially invoking that rule here as I'm one of the uh, head chiefs of all of this nightmare. Um, we'll try to get things started as close as we can to those time frames, but there are a lot of moving parts. And as we've gotten more more popular, I've noticed that sometimes we have to take um, extra steps to make sure that everything happens the way it's supposed to. Um, so if you've missed anything today, we have had Finding Common Ground with myself and Dave. This will be one of the last shows for a while that he's actually sitting in as the full uh, liberal host. However, if you were listening to that one, you did notice a few minutes later we did run straight into Opinion Nation with Bryce Robbins. Um, really great show if you haven't checked that one out yet. I will have the podcast links and everything else available. There is one on our podcast page now, uh, but there are a few things that I need to take care of on my end because we were having some system issues. Um, but that will be cleaned up as soon as this show ends, and then I'll make sure that everybody has access to the link again. Um, now, as far as that goes... Um, if you've missed it, I would definitely want to, or, or advise you to check that one out. For those of you who don't know, and I'm, I'm probably going to embarrass the kid, but I do want to talk about him for a second. And I, I said kid, not as derogatory. Uh, Bryce and I have been speaking for the uh, last few weeks, ever since he did an interview on Finding Common Ground. Uh, he actually had an idea at one point about starting a YouTube news channel and wanted to come on our show and actually talk to folks about that. Well, as you know, Dave has been looking to try to round out the lineup with a few more liberal hosts because our original idea was to bring everybody to the table, let them have a voice, and try to see if we could maybe encourage some other folks to realize that maybe not all liberals are crazy, um, just like hopefully we could make some folks realize that not all conservatives are crazy. I myself being the, uh, the exception that proves the rule because I am one crazy mofo, and I'll just tell you that up front right now. Um, but that being said, um, first show was a little rocky. We weren't quite ready for a few things here and there. Um, but what I wanted to do, as we've always done with every other show, is just kind of let it run, see what happened, uh, then came back, made some suggestions. We've uh, 
fixed some quality issues on both sides of it. And he actually had a guest on with him today, that, and they did a fantastic back and forth with an interview. So if you missed last week's, it is available. Um, also, this week's, again, is right now on our podcast page. It will be pulled down here in just a little bit so I can clean up a few things because... For some reason, something wasn't working quite as it was supposed to, but it wasn't anything that uh, greatly impacted the show. So I'll be cleaning up a few things, and I'll make sure that link is readily available. But if you haven't checked it out yet, the reason I bring this up is I've been looking for hosts, and I do know that there are a few um, both conservative and liberal hosts out there that are younger than you might think. Bryce happens to be one of them. Um, He's only 16 years old, and the fact that he... I mean, I'm sorry, with the way everybody views today's education system, the fact that he's able to hold his own for an hour-long show, make fairly articulate points, it gives me hope for the future. Even if the kid is a liberal. <laughs> come on, Bryce, you knew I was going to take that shot. I mean, come on. I'm the fr- I'm a free speech guy, and I, I, sh- I take flack on that from all sides because, you know, I have folks that tell me that I'm not conservative enough because I have friends that are liberals. I have... Uh, friends that tell me that I'm too liberal, um, I or that I'm too cons- or too liberal, too conservative, and then I have friends that are libertarians that just tell me that I don't fit in anywhere, which is fine with me because I've always been kind of a square peg round hole kind of guy. So I just kind of tend to make my own way and figure it out as I go, um, and that is exactly what we've been doing here at the Spark Radio Network as well as K98Talk.com. When it started, it was uh, we had honestly no idea what we were going to do with it. Now that we are coming up on two years, though, we do have a rather uh, substantial following, uh, both on Facebook, Twitter, um, all the different ways that you can find us. And we do have regular listeners. And, of course, yours truly has now been added to TopTalkRadio.com, uh, which is a conservative radio show directory. And it does list the top talk show hosts in the country. Thanks to the work here that we've done with America Off the Rails, we are now starting to get recognized. So I just want to, again, take a moment to say thank you to everyone that has helped make that happen, whether you are part of the team behind the scenes, whether you are one of the ones that is has been working with us to get some issues squared away, and you know who you are, um, or you're one of the ones that listen on a regular basis. I just want to take a moment to say we couldn't do any of this that we're doing, whether it's with a conservative show, the show that kind of tries to be in the middle and beats up on everybody, which is what Finding Common Ground does, or now our first official liberal host-only show, Opinion Nation. And I do have to say, he is a liberal, but he does try to um, keep things pretty well-centered. He actually said a few nice things about Romney today, which both surprised me and scared me. Um, Because, yeah, Romney's not exactly who he portrayed himself to be in the 2012 election. So while I think he might have been a better choice than who we have now, I'm still wondering if we still might not have wound up exactly where we are, just a, just a little bit better off. Which concerns me because there's rumor has it that he's considering running again. Um, now, there are lots of things that I wanted to talk about today, but again, I just wanted to give a hats off to Bryce Robbins, the host of Opinion Nation, it's only his second show, and for those of you who've been with us for the long haul, you remember mine and Dave's first show. I'm surprised you listened as long as you did, but I know you're still out there, because Dave sounded like Darth Vader, and I sounded like Speedy Gonzalez, and you guys kept listening anyway. So if you look at it, as far as I'm concerned, he was already light years ahead of where we are, and the fact that he is over half my age, less than me, makes me really sad because he's probably going to surpass me by leaps and bounds as we continue to teach him what we do here. But if you have not checked it out yet, I definitely would encourage you to do so. And again, that show will be available later today on our podcast page. I'll also be moving it over to SoundCloud. And if he continues to put together shows that went as well as this one, other than the issues on my side of things, it will probably also be another one that we try to submit to Stitcher soon. So again, hats off to Bryce Robbins. Um, also, I did want to mention one other show, and then I promise I will get into mine, but I, I have to give props where they're due, because there's lots of stuff that we do here behind the scenes, and it, you don't realize how much goes into it until you're actually trying to do it, because you know everybody thinks about you know like Rush Limbaugh and Sean Hannity. Oh, all they have to do is talk on the radio for three hours a day, and they're done. 
Uh, what you don't realize is, is for every hour that you're live, there's usually at least three hours of prep work that goes into it. It's kind of like a college class. You know, when they say, well, you're going to be in class for an hour, but it's a 12 credit hour course. That's because that's exactly how many hours a week they expect you to be doing homework, even though you're only in class for one hour, anywhere from two to three days a week. So being on live on the air is kind of exactly the same thing. So I want to give a shout out to one other person who um unbeknownst to me has actually had radio experience in the past but of course it was a uh, top 40 work um and that would be grouchy the host of the conservative curmudgeon radio show i tried to do this last night but due to technical issues we had to shut things down so i want to make sure this becomes part of the permanent record uh grouchy you are have now been with us since january i've been looking over your numbers and you're one of the top rated newest launch shows we have so hats off to you and everything that you do. Uh, we've been working together behind the scenes to bring even more stuff to the show and to make sure that it continues to grow and engage and start working on promotion. So just again, want to take a moment to say hats off to my good buddy and actually longtime social media friend. We've actually been talking on social media now for longer than I've been doing radio. Um surprised i hadn't managed to run him off yet because i'm rather dichotomic rather dichotomic when it comes to my views people are always like are you conservative or are you liberal and i'm like i don't know not really i really am conservative i just i understand enough to know that i can't hold the entire country to my same viewpoints no matter how much i might wish that i could so i hold pretty much everything that the republican party stands for i stand for i just don't expect everyone to hold those same opinions and since I do, I am a practicing Christian and I do believe that God gave us free will, I have to understand that just because people may not agree with me doesn't mean that I can try to control them or tell them that they're wrong or beat them down and tell them that they're stupid. If that makes me not conservative, then I guess I'm not conservative, but I'm, I'm not a controlling kind of guy, at least in the ways that I can help it. Okay, so do have a lot of things we are going to be getting to today. I guess we'll get some of the other stuff out of the way first. Uh, biggest thing that's been going on, I got a, a couple of things that I want to play, uh, one of which will be uh, kind of ex explanatory. Then it will go into something that's a little funny, and then I have another clip that I want to play on the same issue, and of course then we'll talk about it a little bit, and that's the whole de deflate gate thing. Which Dave made an interesting point on Finding Common Ground earlier today. Why is it that pretty much any time any type of scandal breaks anymore, they have to put the word gate on the end of it? The only one, of course, that uh, didn't do that lately in recent history was during the whole Whitewater incident. Um, but I think, as Dave pointed out, that was probably because the word water was in there. So if you started throwing around Whitewater gate, people were going to be like, hmm... But yeah, it just seems like every time there's any type of a scandal anymore, somebody has to make sure the word gate is on the end of it. Now, this one, I kind of think it may have been kind of more of a jibe because it kind of rhymes and you know, deflate gate. But hey, what do I know? The NFL is investigating claims to see whether or not the New England Patriots purposely deflated some of the game balls they used in the AFC Championship game against the Indianapolis Colts. Whether or not they purposely deflated these balls may have helped Tom Brady get a better grip on the ball when he was throwing it in the rain. Each team has to provide the NFL referees with 12 game balls, 2 hours and 15 minutes before game time, for the referees to inspect to make sure they meet certain specifications. If the Patriots then took those balls and deflated them, they could face potential fines. The Patriots are infamous for Spygate, in which Bill Belichick, their coach, was fined $500,000 for videotaping the New York Jets. Uh, and the team was also fined $250,000, and they had to forfeit their first round pick back in 2008. This deflate gate gives more ammunition for people out there who want to call the New England Patriots cheaters. The NFL is still investigating the claims into whether or not the Patriots purposely deflated the balls. Patriots coach Bill Belichick has said that he will cooperate fully with the investigation. Quarterback Tom Brady has called the accusations ridiculous. This is unlikely to be anything along the lines of Spygate, where they were forced to give up a first round pick. You're on your way to the Super Bowl. But does your game still feel a bit flat? Cialis Inflatable helps fill your balls anytime the moment is right. Reach under center with confidence, knowing those balls are full and ready to grab. 
Before starting Cialis Inflatable, make sure your quarterback actually has balls to inflate. Do not play with deflated balls. Side effects may include inflated ego, swelling or painful sacks, loss of draft picks or hoodie sleeves, and hefty fines. Why let deflated balls hold you back? Give your balls that extra pump for the big game. Ask your equipment manager about Cialis Inflatable. And stop f***ing cheating. The difference is All right, so yeah, you you heard it here first. Uh, well, probably not, because it's actually been making the rounds on YouTube for a while. Um, full credit was given in the uh, in the uh, or will be d uh, given in the description of the show once it stops uh, being live. Um, however, you know the wife showed me that apparently um, it was uh, shown to her by someone at work, and I just you know I was like you know. It's just funny, and it's wrong on so many levels. There are so many different jokes you could make just from that one little parody. And sadly, at least for the Super Bowl, uh, I do have another clip that is just the parody that will probably be, be making the rounds, um, at least for the next few shows. But hey, I'm a I'm a I'm a talk show host. I, t I take the cheap humor where I can find it. And this is definitely one of those times. All right, so I have something a little more serious to play, and then I'll kind of go into what exactly I honestly wanted to talk about with this, and, and and then we'll go from there. So give me just a second. I don't know if you guys have, uh, have ever met before. We've never met. But your voice but, has been haunting Edward uh, for most of his life. He's my favorite actor of all time right now. After those two, <laughs> right now, <laughs> right now. <laughs> eleven Academy Awards, not not two. Wow! <laughs> How great. you doing? Thank you. Very good to I'm see you. I'm fantastic. I feel great. I I real I love the book, and I want to get to that in a second. Two fourteen in the morning. I feel like I have to ask you uh, about the uh, def, you know the Super Bowl and deflated the balls and all this stuff. Deflate game. This has become a huge story. Do you think it should be a, a huge story? Well, let's see. The government of Yemen has collapsed. Uh -huh. You have terror cells in France, <laughs> and all three network news uh, broadcasts tonight were led with deflate gate yeah in fact i just somebody sent me something in, in vegas now they already have all the proposition bets for for the, for the super bowl you can bet on anything who'll be the mvp blah 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 there's a proposition that says how many times will michaels and collinsworth say deflated ball actually let's just stop right there for a second uh let's pay attention to what he just said there because i think it's kind of pertinent and it's a little disturbing if you ask me with everything that's going on in the news from the whole um the whole situation in Paris with the terrorist attacks, the recent death of the Saudi king, um, the fact that there are parts of the world where the government is basically imploding, and we seem to only be concerned about deflate gate. You know, I hate to say this because I'm going to sound a lot like Tom Brady, and personally, I mean, and this is just, I don't know him personally, um, maybe at some point, um, if I continue to grow, maybe I can actually have him on the show. Then maybe we can see what I think of him personally. But from just his interview style and the callous way that he's been approaching this kind of stuff, the fact that, first of all, when he was first asked about it, he actually laughed out loud on a live radio broadcast. Um, here's the thing. And this would have probably... Uh, I, well, actually, I think the first clip that I played kind of touched on it. This isn't the first time... The New England, New England Patriots have been in trouble um, for doing things that are a little shady. But here's my thing. With everything else that's going on, don't we have more important things we should be focusing on? I mean, let's be real honest for just a second, just so I can kind of bring this into perspective. Um, the Prime Minister of Israel was just denied a meeting with the President, but some dumbass chick who took a bath in Fruit Loops and milk in a bathtub was given a meeting with the president and nobody's really talking about that to me that's disturbing can i just be completely honest you're gonna turn down a meeting with the prime minister of one of our only and our strongest allies in the middle east but you're gonna meet with a lady who decided to go swimming in a bathtub with milk milk and fruit loops was it because of the symbolism because you're a fruit loop or is there something that we need to know did you decide you were going to climb in the bathtub with her 
I mean, you know, if you listen to Joan Rivers, uh, you're gay and Michelle's a tranny. So, um, did you possibly decide that you maybe wanted to try a real woman? Or, you know, I mean, at this point, I'm, be I'm being hateful and I get that, but I'm angry. You know, we have all of this stuff that's going on in the world and we're focusing on whether or not a football team let air out of a football. And it's the Patriots, for God's sake. I mean, who cares? They cheat all the time anyway. Let's just either make them change the name or disband the team if we're going to continue to monopolize news coverage because of stupid crap that they pull. Because who the hell really cares? It's a game that we all played in our backyard as children, and we're playing, paying people millions of dollars a year to play it. And I am a capitalist, and I am a free market guy, but to me, that makes absolutely no sense. That we have all of this money and all of this time invested in something that doesn't matter. You want to talk about how we could really start making a difference? How about if we make sure all of these people that are pay being paid millions of dollars to play a game are paying their fair share in taxes? You know, because the only ones that ever get on, get attacked as far as not paying their fair share are the conservative ones. I mean, how many people on the liberal side of the aisle that make millions and millions of dollars a year don't even bother to pay their taxes? Nobody talks about that. Al Sharpton. <coughs> yes, <coughs> Al. <coughs> I'm talking to you. You know, come on now. What do you owe at last point, last count? About four million at this point? And you are the advisor to the president? There are so many things that we should be talking about right now, and this is not one of them. So yes, I'm going to have a little bit of fun with it because it's something that distracts me from the fact that our entire world is falling apart for about 30 seconds at a time. But I'm not going to come at it the way a lot of these other folks are doing it. Well, Brady's definitely cheating and blah, 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 blah. Who the hell cares? So he cheated. It's not like it was a three-point game. The Colts might as well have put some college team in their uniform that day because apparently they didn't want to be there. I don't care how underinflated the balls were because it didn't matter because they couldn't do anything on the ground or in the air. Now, just to be perfectly clear, I do not, and I understand that, you know, I first and foremost, I am a Cowboys fan, but second, because I used to live there. I am a Seattle Seahawks fan, and then if you go third and fourth, basically it's kind of a toss-up between the Eagles and the Redskins, but lately the Redskins have taken more of the third place spot only because they get so much crap over their name, because I did live on the East Coast for a while too, and with Delaware, you basically got to pick whether you wanted to be an Eagles fan, as I like to call it over there, or a Redskins fan. So, since I've kind of lived a little bit of everywhere as far as left coast, right coast, middle, um, basically first choice Dallas, um, except lately, I actually have gotten to the point where now that I'm older and I understand more about the stuff that goes on behind the scenes, I'm not sure how much longer I'll be able to continue to support Dallas only because as I get more and more uh, understanding in the behind the scenes stuff with football, like, I'm, I'm not a Jerry Jones fan. Not to mention the fact that Romo really pisses me off. I mean, it's like after Thanksgiving, he's like, um, which bowl game did we get in, coach? Wait, you mean we're not done yet? Ah, crap. I had a date planned, man. I thought we were done. I'm used to college. That's never changed. It's like after Thanksgiving, the dude's like done. I mean, you might as well go from Tony Romo to Tony Chocomo because that's basically what it is for the last part of the season. He's the only quarterback I know that can snap, that can be to the point where he likes to, I, I don't know if he does this on purpose or if he just does it to piss everybody off, but you know, he's one of those, it's always got to be a fourth quarter comeback. And then he gets it close and it either works or it doesn't. So 75% of the time he snatches defeat from the jaws of victory all because for some reason he can't seem to get his head out of his ass until the fourth quarter so yeah as you can tell I'm a little angry with Dallas too because they made it to the playoffs for the first time in forever and then went <laughs> never mind just kidding I'm gonna go to the bar and watch the Super Bowl instead of being in it um because yeah I'm sorry in my estimation um yeah, that, that would have been a better game. 
I hate the Patriots. I have for a long time. Uh, that being said, even if they did cheat, it's not like anything is going to happen to them. The worst thing that's going to happen at this point is they're going to lose a draft pick. <laughs> like they care. They might actually face a fine. Um, if you're going to find them, it better be a large fine because anything more than about $3 million is going to be about like them getting us, about like one of us getting a seatbelt ticket. The only way you're going to get them to stop is if you start hurting them in the pocketbook and don't make it worth it for them anymore. I mean, can we not do what they did, you know, in baseball when they figured out people were doing things they shouldn't have been doing? They got all these records, you know, you start getting the asterisks by it. If they do win the Super Bowl, can we put an asterisk next to it since they got there by underinflating balls? Just a thought. But again, so many other things that we really should be talking about other than that. And some of it's at the national level. Some of it's at the international level. I'm going to take a little bit of a break on the international stuff because we've been covering a lot of that lately. Um, we'll have some of that later in the show. But for now, want to take things a little more local and talk about some stuff that's been going on. For those of you who don't know, I do, of course, reside in the great state of Oklahoma, and unlike a lot of my liberal friends, I do actually still consider it a great state. However, I have to say, lately, I've been a little concerned. One of the things that now concerns me is um, the fact that we have a state legislator who wants to... Ex At first, I thought they were trying to abolish the term limits, but it turns out they're simply trying to extend them. Here's the irony in this. Um, the legislator who is attempting to extend said term limits will actually be terming out soon. So it seems to be kind of a self-serving interest kind of thing. And here's the thing that I don't understand. At the national level, we're all screaming that we need term limits. And at the state level, you're all like, well, we have them, but let's make them just a little bit longer. I don't think so. I think 12 years is sufficient time for you to be inducted into the system, chewed up and spit out and come out a pod person, which seems to be what happens with pretty much everybody that becomes involved in politics anymore whether it's at the local, state, or federal level. You go in with the best of intentions, you come out a pod person, and that's basically all she wrote. But that is a good side effect of the fact that we now no longer really have a two-party system. We have a system that is basically two halves of the same coin, or as I like to call them, the Republicratic Party. Um, now, one other thing, and then I'll get back into the local news. I did want to mention, and I actually meant to do this at the beginning of the show, and for some reason it slipped my mind until now. Um, for those of you who uh, do like the intro music, you'll also notice that I've now made uh, part of this uh, the intro song my bumper music as we go into and out of commercial, which you'll hear that in just a couple minutes here. Um, but um, I've actually been talking to the band that did the that does the song, um, the Dirty Uncles, and they have actually agreed to come on to a future episode at some point. Um, so we will probably have a guest segment for them coming up soon. Once we get a date finalized, I do want to try to put it out far enough where we can make sure to publicize it for everybody because I want to make sure it's beneficial to everybody that's involved instead of just doing it as, hey, we're going to have them on tomorrow. Make sure you tune in. Yeah. It, when I try to when I want to when I try to have high profile guests on, I try to do it at least a week to two weeks out, just to give them plenty of time so that if they have anything that uh, comes up, we can have plenty of time to figure that out. Also, to give us plenty of time to publicize it to make sure that everybody knows. Um, now that being said, again, I have actually been speaking to those guys through Twitter, and I think we will be putting together something, hopefully, probably within the next few weeks, to have them on one of the evening shows. Because, uh, you know, um, having been around bands, I'm sure they probably don't want to get up at 11 o'clock in the morning central, which is uh, about the same. Well, they're out of Texas, so it would be the same time frame for them as well. But if you haven't checked them out yet, you definitely need to. Um, they are available on SoundCloud, and each one of their tracks does have a Buy Now button. So uh, go to SoundCloud, search Dirty Uncles. Um, it's spelled a little differently. It's spelled U-N-K-U-L-S. Um, but you can find them, you can listen to them. If you like what you hear, make sure you click that Buy Now button and you can actually get it straight from iTunes. And thanks again, guys. 
I do have to say I've listened to everything that you've put out. Um, the one that I use as my intro still has to be my favorite, and it seems to be the crowd favorite too because it has tons and tons of plays. But you guys do really great work, and I'm looking forward to having you on the show. All right, so that being said, it is actually about time for us to go ahead and take a break, and then we will change gears and get into some of the uh, local stuff that's going on, and then I do have a few other things I wanted to touch on. Again, I'm actually kind of feeling a little bit under the weather today, so I'm not sure if we're going to do the full two hours or not. I will go with you for as long as I can stand it, only because I feel really bad because due to uh, issues beyond my control, I had to bail in the middle of a show last night. Doesn't happen very often, but when you're trying to hold down a full-time job and hold down a full-time radio station and deal with family issues, sometimes they get thrown in the middle, sometimes you don't have a choice. So thanks to everybody that tunes in on on a regular basis. Um, We will continue to try to make this as uh, entertaining as possible for as long as people are willing to listen. And we're going to go ahead and take a quick commercial break, and we will be right back. The NFL is investigating claims to see whether or not the New England Patriots purposely deflated some of the game balls they used in the AFC Championship game against the Indianapolis Colts. Whether or not they purposely deflated these balls may have helped Tom Brady get a better grip on the ball when he was throwing it in the rain. Each team the Super Bowl. But does your game still feel a bit flat? Cialis Inflatable helps fill your balls anytime the moment is right. Reach under center with confidence, knowing those balls are full and ready to grab. Before starting Cialis Inflatable, make sure your quarterback actually has balls to inflate. Do not play with deflated balls. Side effects may include inflated ego, swelling or painful sacks, loss of draft picks or hoodie sleeves, and hefty fines. Why let deflated balls hold you back? Give your balls that extra pump for the big game. Ask your equipment manager about Cialis Inflatable and stop f***ing cheating. The difference This is Misty, owner of Wax It Studio in Edmond, Oklahoma, and I'm here to talk to you about a skincare product called Theramedics. Theramedics has a wonderful line of products from anti-aging to hyperpigmentations all the way to acne. In fact, everyone at some point in our lives is affected by acne. Acne can cause a great deal of embarrassment and anxiety. And in order to prevent and help other people, I have tapped into this wonderful product called Theramedics. Visit my website at www.prettyskindeep.com. Again, that's www.prettyskindeep.com. The staff of K98 Talk and the Spark Radio Network is proud to announce that our very own Rowdy Rick Robinson has been selected as one of the top conservative talk show hosts in the nation for his program, America Off the Rails. Again, congratulations to Rowdy Rick Robinson for a job well done and another reason to stay connected to K98 Talk and the Spark Radio Network. Tune into The Family Factor with Denny C. every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday morning at 5 a.m. as he looks at all the challenges facing the family today. Denny will give you a refreshingly new look at tackling some of the biggest issues. So start your day off on the right foot with Denny C. and The Family Factor right here on K98Talk.com. Tell upon the bobby saw you lost Political 
religious will replace the bill of rights Support religious freedom unless you pray to Jesus Christ The press is in our pockets cause there's no one free You cannot make a move now that the NSA can see Don't expect equality, respect for fair play The IRS will target those who vote the wrong way Welcome to the All right, folks, we're back. We're live. This is America Off the Rails. I am your host, Rick Robinson. We're going to continue moving right along again. So far today, we've basically been talking about Deflate Gate and giving a few shout outs to some of the newer shows that have uh, come quite a long way and numbers are really starting to pick up. So, again, if you're not checking out shows like Opinion Nation and the Conservative Curmudgeon Radio Show, what the hell is the matter with you anyway? I mean, come on. Do we always have to agree with everything that we hear on the radio? Honestly, a lot of folks have been giving me crap about that, but I have to tell you, one of the things that's actually made this show better is I run the board for the show that comes on right before this one, so I'm like, ooh, I wasn't even planning on talking about this, and now you've given me an entirely different direction to go with it. So, yeah. I mean, come on. Some of the better ideas that you're going to get if you disagree with someone is to listen to them and go, well, this guy said this, but this is true, and this isn't true. So one of the things we're trying to do is we're trying to cast a wider net, and I know I'm going to catch grief over it because I've heard it from some folks for quite some time already. You know, there's a reason liberal radio doesn't ever make any money. There's a reason that everybody goes conservative only. Look, I didn't start this to make money. Money's becoming a side effect of what we're doing and the fact that we're actually starting to do it fairly well. Uh, So we are already being reviewed by several sponsors we have uh, folks that are looking into other sponsorships as well so i mean if we make money at it great but it, that that wasn't why this was started at least not for me i mean granted the goal was eventually to monetize it to a point because at some point if i can do this well enough and long enough what i'd like to do is do nothing but this um, but if i don't ever get to that point but i can still make a decent side bit of money at it you know what that's great and awesome too but that's not the end all and the be all for us and that's one of the things that I want to make clear to everybody that's one of the reasons why we do things a little differently around here you have liberal only stations and you have conservative only stations and we plan on being at both the spark and K9K98 talk kind of the place where everything kind of comes together especially on K98 talk because if you'll notice for those of you that have been listening for a while that's patterned more off of an AM based radio station um, basically, it has the, the political talk shows during the day, the the less political, more a little different kind of, you know, alternate realities, alternate teachings kind of shows on later at night. And that's kind of the same type of talk radio that I first became exposed to. So it's just one of the things that I've always kind of wanted to do is mirror that same thing. And it seems to be a rather popular format. And the nice thing about it is, is we're pulling in shows from a bunch of different networks. We have folks that never listened to us at all before that have started by listening to maybe the one show that they found out we carry and then they find out about other shows so it's become mutually beneficial to everybody because there's going to be times when things are going to be on here that somebody's not going to want to listen to and we understand that so that's why we try to bring in the best of everything that's out there so that if there are other shows that you guys like that you may not even know exist on the other channels you do have the ability to listen to those as well and in this day and age you know um, with the whole ability to basically be able to go back and listen to anything you want pretty much whenever you want it's not like there's not enough time to go around and that's one of the things that I've always kind of thought is let's bring as much of the good stuff to a single place as we can live and then let them find the other stuff that they know is out there all from one single location so far that business model and plan seems to be working fairly well only time will tell now a um, couple things I definitely wanted to make sure we touched on uh, before we go back to kind of the recurring theme for this week because of course you know the State of the Union was this week um, there's been a lot of stuff going on here locally again one of the things we've touched on already is the whole term limit idea another one that I think is a little weird and I understand what they're trying to do, but I think they've gone about it the wrong way. Apparently, there is a state legislator who has decided to try to pass uh, an idea to get something on the ballot because it actually would have to become a state amendment to basically do away with state-issued marriage licenses within the state of Oklahoma. 
Now, there are lots of folks out there listening right now that are in red states that are going, woohoo, rock on Oklahoma, always leading the way. And, and, I, and I get it. You know, you, we're, we don't support gay marriage. Here's the thing, though, and this is where I always have a problem. You're right. I don't, as a conservative Christian, support gay marriage. I think that, unfortunately, there are folks that are choosing to live that way. Whether it's, and I don't mean choosing by they actually chose it. I don't know enough about it to tell you whether it's a choice, whether there's some sort of science involved in it. What I do know is one of the things that drives me crazy is if you look at things from a spiritual level, then we are more than just our flesh and blood bodies. When you spend so much of your time focusing on the carnal flesh and the carnal pleasures, whether you do them heterosexually, homosexually, as a group, as a polygamist, you're missing out on so many more things that really, really matter. So the fact that we spend so much time talking about this really upsets me. Because here's the thing, and I've said this before and I'm going to say it again. We are spiritual beings. If all you're doing is worrying about doing what feels good to you and making sure that someone else that you are doing those things with also feels good as well, you're still missing the mark in so many different places. And I understand there are lots of folks out there right now that are going, but Rick, Steve and I, and this is a guy's probably named John or Bill or whatever. Um, actually, I thought it was funny earlier because when uh, Dave was doing... Uh, uh, particular spin on this conversation he started dropping names like bill and ted and uh thelma and louise i thought that was kind of interesting uh but anyway i digress i mean it's just it's one of those things where you know i don't think we as a country honestly know what love really is anymore because love is not a selfish thing it's not love is also not just an emotion Love means that no matter what, you're going to stick by somebody because you made a commitment and you made a vow. And that's what these people want to be able to do. And I understand that by my religious beliefs, what they're doing is a sin. But how many of us, and I mean us as a general group, not trying to name anyone specific, go out on Saturday nights without our significant other, get drunk, take someone to a motel room, do whatever you're going to do with that said someone in the motel room. Get up, go with your significant other, to, with your family, to church on Sunday mornings. What you did the night before was a sin. Have you been removed from the church because you are continuing to commit sin? No, because most people don't know what it is that you do, so nobody can hold you accountable for it, but God still knows. Here's my point, and I've heard it said through another fellow talk show host here in Oklahoma who also has the name Rick, um, Rick Roberts on KTOK, that, you know, he was a lot like I used to be. And he looked at homosexuality and he said, you know, that's a sin that, that violates God's law. It's wrong. You shouldn't do it. But then he got to thinking about it and he kind of had the same kind of mindset that I do at this point. We don't know how God is working with those people in their hearts. We truly don't. We don't know if he is, we don't know if he isn't, but that being said, we don't know. And again, when we start behaving the way a lot of us behave when it comes to homosexuality, even behind the pulpit, are we not behaving much the same way the Pharisees did um, when Jesus was hanging out with prostitutes? Jesus didn't come to, the, to earth to save those of us that were already living by the law. Jesus came to the earth to do away with the law and to make sure that there was salvation. Now, what happens if you decide not to follow that choice? That's between you and God. But I'm not going to keep harping and holding people accountable because they have different belief systems than I do. I can't do that. My, my faith tells me not to do that. So the fact, and I promise I'll, I'll stop preaching and bring everything back home. Some of you have listened to this show before. You know that I actually was a lay pastor for a while. So every once in a while, I can't help myself. Um, but I will uh, bring it back home at this point and just, just say that, you know, um, I think the uh, abolishing of the marriage license is a bad idea for several reasons. I also know that there are a lot of anarchistic libertarians out there that are all jumping up and down and hooping and hollering and 
shouting for joy because anything that gets rid of one less government thing is great in their books. But come on. I mean, honestly. There are going to be plenty of us that are practicing Christians that are, that are going to face some form of judgment for some of the stuff that we do. Did you guys miss the passage where, you know, the whole thing is you stand up in front of God, he reads off the things that you've done, and Jesus says, nope, covered by me. Nope, believes in me. So, yeah, that's covered too. So, we're all going to have a reckoning. There are all things that every single one of us has done when we were by ourselves and there was nobody around that were wrong. I'm not going to hold people to a standard that even I myself can't always uphold to not live in sin. If we could live in if we could do without living in sin, we wouldn't have needed Christ to die for us in the first place. So first of all, I think that the the whole to to use a euphemistic term, the closeted reason for this is wrong because it's basically just another way to try to take a jab at the folks that are living in a manner that you don't agree with. And that being said, one of the things that I keep wrestling with is, is this not similar to when it was an abomination for a white guy to marry a black girl or vice versa? Because there are plenty of scriptures that talked about keeping everybody separate, which is where, you know, things like the clan came into play. I mean, look, the bottom line is, yeah, even if they're doing something that God doesn't agree with, he still loves them. So shouldn't we? Now, I say this for several reasons. I'm going to take things uh, more national level for just a second then we'll because uh, it kind of ties into what I'm talking about then we'll be back to the local level because there's still more fun here in my great state but one of the things that I had heard uh, recently making the rounds is apparently there was a cake shop and I know what you're about to think but trust me it's a little different this time there was a cake shop I'm not going to mention where where a Christian group had gone in and requested that a specialty cake be done with an anti-gay marriage message. The owner of the shop did agree to make them a cake. However, they did say that they weren't going to put that customized message on it, which was basically a picture of, I believe, two guys holding hands with a line through it. Um, and the shop owner said, I will happily make you a cake, but I will not make one with that message. And of course, after every Christian that I knew threw a fit when the gay couple that wanted to have their pictures taken and the photographer said, no, because I don't agree with your lifestyle. And the uh, gay couple sued them. All the Christians were up in arms. Oh, that's religious discrimination. Blah, 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 blah. They can't sue for that. Um, well, guess what you just did? Shoe was on the other foot. You decided to do the exact same thing. And now the group that was turned away by the shop owner, rather than going to another shop that would have probably gladly made the cake, decided they wanted to file a lawsuit. Can we just do away with the freaking lawsuit crap? I mean, just for real. Can we not do away? I mean, can, what, does everything have to end in a lawsuit anymore? Everything has to end in a lawsuit anymore. I mean, you know what? I get it. You're mad because you wanted a cake done and they told you no. You know, if it was me and I was the business owner, I hate to say it, but what I would do, and this is going to be one of those instances where I would be committing a sin, but I would still do it anyway. I would have a copy of some sort of a hard copy of my calendar when they say, well, we'd like to have this cake done and we need it done by this time. I'd be like, well, as you can see, according to this calendar right here, I have lots of other projects in front of me, but hey, Bill's cakes down the street. Yeah, I'm sure they'll make you one. That way nobody has to say, no, I'm not going to make you the cake because I think you're a douche canoe. Whether it's because it's an anti-gay message or a pro-gay message. I'm just saying, is there not a way that we could get past this stuff without it always coming back to some form of discrimination? Because it always seems to be a liberty for me, but none for thee type of situation when you really stop and think about it. Everybody thinks their own views are the only ones that matter. And that's a large problem. 
Okay, so back to more of the na or the state level stuff here in Oklahoma. Well, I guess state and neighboring states. Uh, thanks to the local gas prices that are now plummeting nationwide, um, folks in Texas are now starting to worry about how long their economy is going to be able to hold out. Uh, there are now indications that if the prices continue to fall, it may start impacting home prices in the state of Texas. Another uh, semi-blow to the economy is apparently the governor of Colorado is now wishing that marijuana had not been legalized in his state, at least not yet. In his own words, any other states that plan on doing what we have done here should at least wait two more years before taking any such action. And he didn't make that statement lightly. What he's finding statewide is there are a lot of folks now that want to open up marijuana-based businesses. Well, of course, they need capital and financing to be able to open up said marijuana-based businesses. Most banks refuse to issue the loans because of the fact that the production, manufacture, and distribution of said marijuana businesses still violate federal law. Now, there are two other states that have, uh, I believe it's two, recently passed similar legislation. I do believe it was Washington State as well as Alaska. Be curious to see what their governors are saying so far. But the biggest thing that the Denver governor, uh, I keep saying Denver governor, Colorado uh, governor uh, continues to bring up is that there are just way too many unintended consequences, way too many um, legal issues that have not been covered and the fact that they were one of the first ones to wade out in this type of deep water has caused issues they didn't expect like the fact that Denver and surrounding larger cities in the Colorado in the state of Colorado now have rising homeless populations because they have so many people that are doing everything they can to get to somewhere where marijuana is legal and then of course they they don't have the money to get home now, I'm going to give you my honest opinion, and this is something, again, that I've had to wrestle with on a personal level due to family issues. At this point, I say we legalize it, and I'm going to tell you why before anybody f blows a gasket. We have way too many things like K2 that are basically synthetic marijuana that are a million times worse than the stuff that is, is being put out. Not only that, but a million times more addictive. And I'm not one of the ones that will tell you that I don't think that I think marijuana is not addicting. I think anything that you put into your body that makes you feel differently, whether it's chemical dependence or psychological dependence, it winds up becoming a dependence, whether you want to admit it or not. I think marijuana is much the same way. One of the biggest concerns that I hear everybody mentioning is now thanks to new technology, the THC content in the marijuana plants that are grown today seem to be exponentially higher than the ones that folks have smoked in the past, and they're wondering if maybe that's not part of the reason why it seems to be a growing group of people that will do anything, including uproot and move to a new state and not have the money to come home to get a hold of said plant. To me, that does sound a bit like an addiction, but who am I? I'm not a doctor. Now, um... Also, there's the fact that, of course, in my great state, which is normally one of the ones touting states' rights at every single opportunity, has recently filed a lawsuit with the federal government in regards to the enforcement of federal legislation and laws in regards to marijuana in regards to neighboring state Colorado making it illegal, or legal, sorry. Mainly because the state of Oklahoma feels that it is placed a burden on their funding because they have more interdictions now coming down from the state of Colorado um, and just having to waste more money overall for enforcement, which, you know, I'm sorry. This is one of the, th one of the things that I'm going to agree with the libertarians on. It's a plant. If people want to smoke it, they're going to find a way to smoke it. It's no different than when we had prohibition. Yes, it was the law of the land. Yes, it should have been obeyed, but was it? No. We had bootleggers. We had speakeasies. No matter where you turn, people were still getting the things that they wanted. Now, I'm not going to be one of the ones that's going to say we should just open up the floodgates and let everybody smoke or pop whatever they want, but I am going to say that, you know, it's a plant. It's really not any more or less harmless than tobacco and... Um, tobacco is still legal. Nobody likes it. 
You can't really smoke it much of anywhere anymore, but it's still legal. Not only that, but with the way we talk about how much better things could be with our environment, if you really stopped and looked at what actually caused marijuana to be criminalized in the first place, do you realize the kind of things that can be made with hemp? Fabrics, textiles, paper, um, at about a third of the cost of uh, dealing with trees, stronger fibers, uh, more paper per square yard. I mean, you just it just goes on and on and on and on. Also, hemp can be used to make plastic. Um, there are hemp-based plastics, but of course nobody wants us to use those because, you know, the only other way that we know of to make plastic involves what again? Anybody? Anybody? Bueller? Petroleum. There are so many aspects of our economy that are controlled by oil. Then, of course, you have the fact that around the same time as all of this stuff started being looked at to be criminalized, the invention of polyester, which was a uh, amalgamation of ingredients that basically led to cheap clothing, um, but you could get better quality clothing using the fibers from hemp, but, you know, who wants that when you just invented a new fabric? Now, the one thing that I don't like that's happening in Colorado is the fact that we now have, um, and actually I saw this on a show not too long ago, which surprised me. There are now even bars where they like infuse different types of marijuana into wine as you drink it. It gives off uh, the chill. Well, they chill the smoke somehow, and as they pour the wine in there, the it um, basically the smoke kind of warms back up. And it gives off the smoke and the flavor of the marijuana mixed in with the wine. That just doesn't seem safe to me. But hey, what do I know? I've never actually intentionally smoked marijuana. I have uh, gotten a contact high more than once thanks to uh, spending quite a bit of my younger life in a uniform um, and walking up on cars. And actually people used to call me two-legged drug dog back in the day because I always knew when somebody was smoking it because honestly the smell of it makes me sick. And it actually literally does turn my stomach. So I was always pretty good at finding it, sadly. I didn't feel well for hours after I did, but I was always pretty good at finding it. That being said, even after seeing everything that I've seen, um, and again, because of personal uh, situations that will not be discussed on air, um, I honestly think at this point, if we're going to have people that keep finding creative ways to make an equivalent to it anyway that's a million times worse than the original, we might as well just make the original legal. But um, that is already happening, uh, not everywhere. And of course, Colorado is urging, urging any other states that are considering legalization to wait a couple of years before they do, only because of the large mess that has occurred since legalization. And I honestly would have, have to agree. I think before any other states do it, they really need to take a close look at the differences between how Alaska, Washington, and Colorado handle the situations and see if they can't find a way to navigate some of these uh, heretofore uncharted waters to make sure that if they do decide to legalize, that it's done safely and properly. Now, again, like I said, I'm not for opening the floodgates because, let's face it, I irritate people when I say this, but we as a creature are stupid. There are certain things that need to be limited and there are certain things that shouldn't be being ingested, but I'm not opposed to someone partaking of a plant should they choose to. But again, kind of digressing a little bit when it comes to that, but at the same time, you know, it is still kind of important. And actually, we have already hit the point where it's about time to take yet another break. That seems like it went really, really fast. All right, well, we're going to have to take a quick break. We'll be right back here in just a few
K98talk.com, a leader in Internet radio. So grab your seatbelts and take the ride of your life on K98talk.com. K98 Talk is expanding its lineup for 2015. This means we are expanding our advertising base. Whether you're a startup trying to push through to the next level or an established business trying to supplement your advertising budget, web-based advertising is a solid investment. Thanks to Talk's newest partnership with TuneIn Radio and instant access to our sister station, K98 FM, we give you worldwide access at a reasonable cost. Interested parties should email us at sales at k98fm.com. It's Cliff Davis for KLCI FM, the best radio station in the world. Coming soon. Stay tuned. Tune into the Family Factor with Denny C every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday morning at 5 a.m. as he looks at all the challenges facing the family today. Denny will give you a refreshingly new look at tackling some of the biggest issues. So start your day off on the right foot with Denny C and the Family Factor right here on K98talk.com. I'm Steve Long of Liberty Unfiltered. If you're tired of hearing the same Republican and Democrat banner from the mainstream media, join me on Wednesday nights at 9, H Central, as I crawl out of the cesspool of partisan politics and bring the fight for freedom against the advocates of big government to the masses. Folks, we're back. We're live. This is America Off the Rails. So far today, we've kind of been all over the map. Do have a few more things I really want to get to today, and then we'll probably shut things down just a little bit early. Again, unfortunately, I'm kind of feeling a little bit under the weather. I'm going to try to take it easy for the rest of the day and do still have some work I need to do behind the scenes anyway. All right. So, um, so far, we've talked about the whole um, legalization issue, the fact that... um, Oklahoma seems to only be about states' rights when it benefits them, um, which saddens me. Um, And Colorado's wishing for a do-over when it comes to legalization, at least according to their their governor. And, of course, I've given you uh, my stance and my take on legalization. And that was not an easy thing for me to come to. Uh, For those of you who've been following along for a while, we have a Facebook page where we've talked about this stuff ad infinitum um, over at uh, www.facebook.com uh, common ground uh, forward slash common ground political page um, and yeah talked about it for for months in depth and back and forth and over and under and through and back again and around and it's honestly not until it impacted me on more of a personal level that I did finally start to understand you know there's just there has to be some give and take somewhere and again if you really start looking into the criminalization of something like marijuana you'll find a lot of it has to do with the manufacturer industry and the simple fact of the matter is our lives if we had access to something like hemp would honestly be better because there are so many different things that can be done with it as far as making better stronger plastics um 
using using no trees to make paper for that matter. We wouldn't even need trees for paper anymore. So everybody's all freaking out over the rainforest. We could stop deforestation today if people would be allowed to grow hemp plants instead to be used for cash crops. And I'm not talking about to smoke it. I'm talking about for manufacture purposes. So here's the thing that always drives me crazy. You know, you have all these big oil companies and all these folks that make all these millions and billions of dollars from something like oil. Why, if you're so concerned about the fact that oil might not be around much longer or whatever the case may be, why aren't you guys the ones taking some of this money that you've made from something like oil and making sure that your own company starts shifting away from things like that to make sure that things like that happen? I mean, would it not make sense for, you know, the same companies that have been involved with the oil industry to suddenly start, you know, and all the petroleum products and everything else? Um, why not take some of your money and start investing in making sure that when hemp becomes able to be used, you're one of the front runners in how to use the products. That way you're still making money from oil while we're transitioning away from some of the petroleum based products. And now you're making money off of the usage of hemp for you clothing manufacturers out there that are all freaking out because polyester might not be used as often because hemp is a better, stronger fabric. I'm pretty sure there's a way you could get out in front of that too. But hey, what do I know? It just seems like once we have something where we're kind of set in our ways, that's pretty much all we want to deal with is what we know. Instead of even possibly taking the opportunity to maybe not only try to make things better for everybody, but also make a little bit of money at the same time. You know, but again, what do I know? Because right now everybody's like, I tuned into this show because this guy said he was a conservative. And right now all he's talking about is wishing that marijuana was legal and blah, blah, blah. Well, you know, I am a conservative, but I also like to think. And one of the things that I think is we would be a lot better off monetarily and economically if we were using the better options for manufacturing rather than all of these not cost effective ways to get to the same stuff whether it be paper or um, plastics or, I mean, I've even seen bricks made out of hemp by the time it's all said and done as a byproduct. I mean, there's so many different things that can and should be being done with such a versatile product, and yet we can't touch it because that, well, we just can't because it's illegal. And again, you don't believe me, do some research on your own. That's why I bring this stuff up. Just because I'm talking about it doesn't necessarily mean that I agree with all of it, but I am still going to give you my opinions and still try to prompt you into doing some research of your own, which is why this show exists. Now, um, a couple other things to touch on, and then we probably will start winding things down for the day. Um... There has been a recent change in the government of Saudi Arabia. Um, I actually do have a, a clip about that, I do believe, so we might as well go ahead and roll that now. Maybe. Bayan min al diwan al malaki. Bibalig al asa wal huzn. The official announcement from the royal court didn't come as a surprise. King Abdullah had been in hospital for several weeks, suffering from a lung infection. He came to the throne in 2005 after succeeding his half-brother, King Fahd, seen here at his funeral. Known as a reformist in the ultra-conservative Muslim kingdom, King Abdullah was aligned with the United States in its fight against al-Qaeda. When the 9-11 terrorist attacks took place in the U.S., it was later revealed 15 of the 19 hijackers were from Saudi Arabia. Abdullah had to steer the kingdom's alliance with the U.S. through criticism at home. Despite his desire for reforms, the king with fellow Sunni Arab monarchs opposed the Middle East wave of pro-democracy uprisings, seeing them as a threat to stability in the region. The kingdom clamped down on any dissent and riot police crushed street demonstrations by Saudi Arabia's Shiite minority. 
Much of his alliances within the Middle East were shaped by his opposition to Shiites from Iran. In Lebanon, he opposed the Iranian-backed Hezbollah, and in Syria, he supported and armed rebels battling to overthrow President Bashar Assad, Iran's top Arab ally. Back at home in a kingdom where women have few rights, King Abdullah took steps towards creating opportunities for them. For the first time, he added women to the Shura Council, the advisory body to the absolute monarchy. And in 2012, two female athletes competed in the Olympics for the first time in history. Realizing more than half of Saudi Arabia's population of 20 million is under the age of 25, he sought to educate more women, opening a university bearing his name where men and women share classrooms. But mindful of an ultra-conservative opposition at home, King Abdullah refused to back down on restrictions like a ban on women driving inside the country. The king has 30 children from a dozen wives. He will be succeeded by his 79-year-old half-brother, King Salman. King Abdullah is believed to have been 90 years old when he died. So at least from what we've been able to determine so far, King Salman seems to want to keep things about the way they have been with relations with the U.S. However, I'll be curious to see how that situation changes as we get to know the new ruler a little bit better. Um, I don't didn't really like the idea that, you know, I mean, the, the former king did take some steps to try to normalize things for women in his country. But it just seems like he took a really hard stance on a few things. And I'm not sure, I hope that the, the well, sadly, I'm, I'm not sure because there's really not much of an age difference between them. So I don't know how much of anything, if anything, will change between the, old, uh, the former king and the new king of Saudi Arabia. But it'll be interesting to see how things develop um, as far as overall and our relationship with them there. Um, because I know they claim to be one of our allies, but... I have to say, I'm just, I, I, to use a Reagan axiom, trust, but trust, but verify. Um, that's basically how I would treat Saudi Arabia from the get go. If ever given the opportunity to lead the nation, which won't happen. Um, some of you are cheering right now. Others of you are sad. The ones that are, of you that are sad probably need to have your head examined. Those of you that are cheering, congratulations, you're normal. All right. So that being said, um, well, like I said, it'll be uh, curious to see how things continue um, and whether or not the relationship changes at all. Again, one of the things that I've already kind of alluded to that honestly really just made me shake my head was the fact that recently the Prime Minister of Israel was denied a meeting with the President of the United States, but bathtub Fruit Loop cereal lady, yeah, sure, she can go hang out with the President. Um, so many things I could say right now, uh, but I don't really want to repeat myself. So, yeah, you heard me call him a Fruit Loop earlier. So if you want to go back and listen to the full thing, you're more than welcome to. All right. So that being said, um, last thing I really kind of wanted to touch on just a little bit more was the State of the Union. And it's more to kind of do a little bit of a compare and contrast because I have a couple of different things that I'd like to point out that I thought were interesting. Um Give me just one moment while I get a couple things queued up here. Members of Congress, I have the high privilege and distinct honor of presenting to you the President of the United States. Thank you. Thank you so much. Please. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Vice President, Members of Congress, my fellow Americans, we are 15 years into this new century. 
Fifteen years that dawned with terror touching our shores, that unfolded with a new generation fighting two long and costly wars, that saw a vicious recession spread across our nation and the world. It has been and still is a hard time for many. But tonight, we turn the page. Tonight, after a breakthrough year for America, our economy is growing and creating jobs at the fastest pace since 1999. Okay, so first thing I wanted to point out there's, you know, quite a little bit of a victory lap there about, you know, growing economy, yada, 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 blah, blah, blah. Best economy since 1999. Um, should we all start partying like it's 1999 now? Because I'm sorry. To me, the fact that he had a meeting with the Fruit Loop lady just proves to me, especially after hearing the little bit of that speech that we just played, it reiterates to me the fact that our president is basically a fruit loop in and of himself now um what i'm going to do next because there's there's a there's a similar correlation here that wasn't really touched on um there was a president there was a state of the union address made in 2007 by bush this was after the republicans lost the house and the senate for the first time in several years and he did something rather interesting um, that we're going to be touching on here in just a second. Thank you very much. And tonight I have the high privilege and distinct honor of my own as the first president to begin the State of the Union message with these words. Madam Speaker. In his day, the late Congressman Thomas D'Alessandro, Jr. from Baltimore, Maryland, saw Presidents Roosevelt and Truman at this rostrum. But nothing could compare with the sight of his only daughter, Nancy, presiding tonight as Speaker of the House of Representatives. Congratulations, Madam Speaker. All right, so I played that for two reasons. One, I just thought it was kind of cool that a uh, conservative president would give a an add a girl to the first liberal, also female, um, speaker of the house in quite some uh, liberal in quite some time, first female speaker ever. But to me, that just kind of shows as a bit of a compare and contrast because as you, as you went on to listen to Obama's State of the Union address from last night, all you really heard was "I, me, my." Or not last night, sorry. Earlier this week, um, all you really heard was I, me, my. The same thing you pretty much already hear most of the time he speaks. The one thing that was a, an, an abysmal failure was my idea for a drinking game, which even Sean Hannity decided to run with uh, live on his show after I tweeted about it. Um, not saying he's talking my Facebook account or my Twitter account or anything like that. Because, I mean, it was a fairly common idea to come up with. But the Let Me Be Clear drinking game was a stark raving failure. So, sadly, I was sober for the entire speech. Wishing I wasn't. But I was also live streaming the speech at the station and had to do a commentary afterwards. So, I figured it was better that I did not sound like a stark raving lunatic or any more so than usual. Uh, now, one last thing that I want to kind of play just to again kind of show the differences between 2015 and 2008 which was this was the last presidential um state of the union address for 
Barack Obama, or not, for George Bush as well, before Barack Obama actually uh, would wind up taking office in 2009. So uh, just an interesting little uh, comparison. What I'm going to do is play the 2008 speech opening and then play the 2015 speech opening again and see if anyone else notices any differences because I know I sure did. I have the high privilege and distinct honor of presenting to you the President of the United States. Now, the first thing I want to point out while he's getting ready to talk is listen to that applause. This is 2008. This is the middle of the mess. And he's still getting standing ovations from everybody. Madam Speaker, Vice President Cheney, members of Congress, distinguished guests, and fellow citizens. Seven years have passed since I first stood before you at this rostrum. In that time, our country has been tested in ways none of us could have imagined. We face hard decisions about peace and war, rising competition in the world economy, and the health and welfare of our citizens. These issues call for vigorous debate, and I think it's fair to say we've answered the call. Yet history will record that amid our differences, we acted with purpose. And together we showed the world the power and resilience of American self-government. All of us were sent to Washington to carry out the people's business. That is the purpose of this body. It is the meaning of our oath. It remains our charge to keep. The actions of the 110th Congress will affect the security and prosperity of our nation long after this session has ended. In this election year, let us show our fellow Americans that we recognize our responsibilities and are determined to meet them. Let us show them that Republicans and Democrats can compete for votes and cooperate for results at the same time. All right, so that's basically the end of that one. Now, just to kind of show you the difference in tones, let's hear the 2015 one again. Um, basically, exact same parallel. Now, two terms into the Obama administration. This will be his, his last State of the Union speech as well. And again, let's hear the differences between the two openings. Members of Congress, I have the high privilege and distinct honor of presenting to you the President of the United States. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Now, first thing I want to point out there is, does that applause line not Mr. sound Speaker, like a golf clap? Mr. Vice President, members of Congress, my fellow Americans, we are 15 years into this new century. 15 years that dawned with terror touching our shores that unfolded with a new generation fighting two long and costly wars, that saw a vicious recession spread across our nation and the world. It has been, and still is, a hard time for many. But tonight, we turn the page. Tonight, after a breakthrough year for America, our economy is growing and creating jobs at the fastest pace since 1999. All right, so that's about all of that one I can stomach. I'm I'm sorry. I'm just I'm I'm not a fan. And honestly, by 2008, I wasn't 
much of a Bush supporter anymore either. In between things like the Patriot Act that I just really started understanding exactly what the hell had been done. Uh, the bailout of the banking industry, the bailout of the auto industry, uh, too many bailouts to count, but none for the American people. Um, and honestly, you know, the more I look into it and the more I look at it, I hear from a lot of liberal folks who didn't like um, how far to the right Obama actually stayed compared to how they wanted to, wanted him to go. They've basically called this the third and fourth terms, terms of G.W. Bush. Um in some ways, I actually agree, because basically the things that Bush started, like the Patriot Act and um, all of the other things that came after that, Obama basically took those and ramped them up on steroids. The last thing I want to talk about before I shut down actually is an extension of the Patriot Act. One of the things that concerned me, and as I, as I mentioned at the beginning of the show, Bryce is still pretty young. One of the things that concerns me, though, is since he's been he spent the majority of his life growing up in a world where we had things like the Patriot Act, he actually mentioned on his show that he's fine with the NSA looking over his shoulder because he's not doing anything wrong. And that's one of the things that I hear very commonly from folks on that side of the issue is, well, if you're not doing anything wrong, you don't have anything to hide. That doesn't have a damn thing to do with it. It's called freedom for a reason. I do, I do, I do not have the right, I don't have or let me, hang on, let me see exactly how I want to phrase this because it's about to come out wrong. The government does not have the right to spy on me at will. If they think I'm doing something wrong, they need to go through due process, get a warrant, do what they need to do. Plain and simple. And if you're fine with them looking over your shoulder and spying on your computer and doing all the things that we know they do already, because let's face it, you know, I used to work for DirecTV and one of the things that we kept being told... Because every once in a while, you'd, you'd, you'd hear the story about the guy that decided to try to make a joke and says, hey, I like that green dress you've got on right now. And the lady would run away screaming and hang up the phone because she thought we were watching her through the receiver because she really did have a green dress on. Um, well, it's come out now that a lot of these boxes that they wanted everybody to have um, because they were going to free up the uh, original UHF and VHF frequencies we were using for TV for emergency communications. Uh, I'm seeing more and more stories that those have cameras in them. So no, I'm sorry. I'm an American citizen. I do not live in the United Soviet States or the United Socialist States of America. I live in the United States of America and I do not feel I need to speak my or need to tell anyone that no it's not okay to spy on your citizens that's not what freedom is so and he another point that he made which is a little concerning to me and sadly I do think he's right is as we get younger and or as the younger crowd is coming up more and more they are leaning a lot more to the left however I would venture to say that a lot of it is more to the libertarian left because there are things that they don't care about, like a lot of the social issues that the conservatives care about. But they are more fiscally conservative because they've been watching their parents struggle for the last 10 years or more. And they know that things need to change. Um, now, at this point, like I said, we're going to go ahead and cut this one about a half an hour short because I still have a little bit of work to do behind the scenes to get ready for today. And then I have some other stuff that I have to deal with. And again not feeling very well. I do want to take a moment to say thanks to everybody who's tuned in. I'll be back with you Monday uh, for the regular scheduled uh, 6 to 7 time slot for America Off the Rails. And don't forget, later tonight we will have Voices of Global Freedom Radio, and then we will have the Late Night in the Midlands crew doing what I hope to be Red Pill with Priscilla. That show actually hasn't been on in a couple of weeks, and I hadn't been able to find out if everything is okay there. Um, I do have a couple of archived episodes that we haven't had a chance to play yet, so if nothing else, I'll make sure that they're on in their normal time slot tonight from midnight to 3. There'll be something that's on. I'm not sure what it will be, but we'll see. Um, and of course, uh, anytime you miss anything, it is always going to be available on our podcast page. You can also find us on SoundCloud. This particular show is basically available everywhere. It's available on our regular uh, podcast page, which you can find on the website. 
It is available through Stitcher. It is available through iHeartRadio. Anytime it is live, it is broadcast through the TuneIn app. We do actually, for tracking purposes, now that we are uh, trying to get some information together for sponsors, ask that anytime you pull up the show, if you're trying to listen through TuneIn, the app for the website is or the, the website is mobile friendly as well. So we would ask that you go to www.k98talk.com. Click on the Listen Live link there. That should still route you straight into the uh, the TuneIn app, and it also will help us monitor traffic so that we can show folks whether or not uh, we are meeting their expectations uh, with the number of listeners that we're bringing to the table and hopefully the new customers that we plan on bringing their way as well. Um, and I'm done talking shop for the moment. Just wanted to give everybody a heads up. If you are listening through TuneIn, try to make sure you get there from the website. If you're listening any other way, that's fine. We can track those numbers too, but we do actually prefer as much as possible when and if you can. Make sure you're going through the website only because it'll help us show uh, what we do have to offer because you guys are making the website a great success when it comes to folks that are going in, checking it out, reading through the stories that are posted there, uh, going through some of the stuff, but a lot of you seem to be going through our older platforms to still get back to us to listen to the shows. Um, and again, the fact that you're listening at all is great. So I don't want you to feel like I'm trying to beat you up for listening to the shows at all. I just, um, what we're trying to do is get everything, uh, as streamlined as possible so that we can show the numbers to both the new hosts that are coming on that are curious to see what type of numbers they're bringing to the table and the sponsors that we are currently in negotiations with, uh, so that we can show them that we are uh, going to be a sound investment. Again, I am Rick Robinson taking my programming director hat off for the remainder of the day and also my talk show host hat and putting them up. Again, thanks for tuning in with us, and I will be back with you Monday. We are going to call it a uh, I almost said call it a night. Can you tell I usually do this show on the weeknights now because I've noticed I've been thrown off all day? Just saying. All right, we are out, folks. You take care. I'll be back with you Monday. We will keep this promise to the American people. If you like your doctor, you will be able to keep your doctor, period. If you like your health care plan, you will be able to keep your health care plan, period. This is the most transparent administration in history. Not even a smidgen of corruption. Fact is, we had four dead Americans. What difference at this point does it make? If you've got a business, you didn't build that.